Welcome back, Ashley Knuckle Faithful. I'm your host, um, B. Woods. Got my right hand man, Mosey P. Yo, what's up? Got a homie to my left, Marky G. What's up, my guy? What's up, my guy? Cheers. We are Ashley Knuckles MMA, the three of us. And today we got some tasty little treats for you. We got State of the Heavyweights. We'll talk about um, Francis Ngannou's contract. He's the current UFC heavyweight champion. And what that might mean for the future of the UFC heavyweight division if um, these contract talks don't get worked out. We'll also <clears throat> preview a potential interim title for the UFC heavyweight belt with Stipe Miocic taking on John Jones, potentially. Then we got some middleweight action um, coming up this weekend. We got Sean Strickland versus Jack Hermanson. Trishawn Gore making his UFC debut versus Brian Battle, also in the middleweight division. And some ashy knuckle chick chat as usual. We can get this thing cracked right off. So, um, state of the heavyweights, man. What's up? Let's talk about Francis' contract. Let let Mark lead off with that one. Francis' contract? Well, he's in some contract disputes, which... I agree with, but don't agree with at the same time. I think he's a little off base, but he does deserve more money, just not what he's asking. How do you feel about that, Brian? Well, to me, it's, um, the whole point uh, is it's, it's a prize fight. The whole point of any of this is to get paid. Um, UFC at this point is... They're the biggest show in town for mixed martial arts. The same way NFL is the biggest show in town for professional football, NBA, for basketball, NHL, so on and so forth. I feel like the top, and if you want to continue the sport, sports growth and potential talent coming into the sport, the pay has to increase. That's how I feel. That's how I always will feel. But isn't uh, NFL like 50-50 between the owners and the players? Something like that? I know. They collectively bargain. There's The players have a union, and the NFL has a union. Well, not a union, but the NFL is an is a, is a, um, entity. They're nonprofit, actually, if you look it up. Um, but they, they collectively bargain with the players. They, that's not happening in the UFC. There's no fighters union. There's definitely no fighters union in the UFC or in general currently. No. Um, there could have been, though. They've tried many, many times, but the people, the fighters themselves, aren't stepping up for it. It's the certain fighters that's the ones that are making money not stepping up with the ones that are not making money, which is holding it back probably. Correct. Yeah. They need the big draws to actually step up versus just all the lesser names. Well, given it's, it's a, a one-player game, literally, when mm-hmm. you're doing fighting. So that's probably why they're not doing it. It's like, yo, who are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? It is a dog world. It's also I mean, the people at the top are very comfortable with what they're at. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a factor. It's definitely a factor. But here's another one. You take all those top guys who should be stepping up. What do they do to step up? How do they, get, how do they make it more... Um, how do they increase the revenue for the the younger guys that are making less money. Most likely they would have to take pay cuts. Interesting. Probably not gonna do Which that. is why they wouldn't do it. I don't think that's true. I think um, in order for the guys under them to make more, they have to make more. Well, Last time this all came up and they tried to fix this scenario, 
the lower guys did get to what they wanted. They created a Reebok deal so they could pay the lower guys more money that the people that couldn't get sponsors and gave them a little bit of extra change. But all the guys on top lost a shit ton of money losing their sponsors. So it's always give and take in that situation. That is true. Because at the end of the day, the big guys on top are going to bring in all the money and the little guys on the bottom don't have that recognition yet. So they can't, they can't fend for themselves in that sense. That's true. But if you look at like successful models, successful models pay a minimum to your up and coming talent, your rookies, right? They get paid a certain amount and your veterans get paid a substantial amount more because of the skins they have in the game on successful models. And what models are those? Okay, let's take the NFL, for example, um, where the players do collectively bargain. The draft picks get paid, um, the premium draft picks, like say your ultimate fighter winners, that will be your premium draft picks. Your guys who are young, up and coming talent, you know they're going to be um, talent in that division, but they're just no name yet, no recognition yet. Mm-hmm. Talent, no name, okay? Um, the UFC is the marketing, so they have the market machine. They are in control of that part, right? Um, and you got the guys who are your gatekeepers, your talent, your veteran talent that's been there for a while. So, like, automatically, it wouldn't be right for the guys who have multiple fights in a UFC to be making less than guys who have none. Right? So it would be there have to be a minimum for veterans, and it would have to be an established amount of fights to be considered a veteran of the in, UFC. Instead of uh, what what was it like six K six K right six K to right. show six K to win. What do you guys think about twenty five twenty five? It's already there. Sorry, six K to show and six K to win hasn't been a thing for a long time. Not in the UFC, at least. How much are they paying now for, like, random? I think the bare minimum contract right now is 2020. No. That's false. Who gets paid less than 2020? There were people that made 12-12 last fight. Last card. Yeah. Holy shit. Look, look, look it up. It's, 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 uh, it's viewable. Wow. I st- I was still thinking it was six six for like the, I mean, the low end it, guys. It's it's not everybody on the roster isn't making twenty five twenty five. I can guarantee you that right now. Wow. And I, I'm not even looking at the data. I'm just going off memory. That's crazy, man. Like, how are you supposed to like do anything with that kind of money? This is your career. You, you got to fight. I got fight like a fight. lot this year. You got to fight pay elite my coaches and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm. If you're making twelve twelve, that means you got to fight and win, um, at lot. least three times. At least a three lot. times a year. At least three. At least at least three. To sustain a uh, future in MMA. Yeah. If you if you yeah. want to do it full time, at least. Mm-hmm. Well, that explains why. Uh, What's that uh, welterweight guy that was working at Texas Roadhouse? Jeff Neal. Yeah, that's ex- Neal, that yeah. explains why he was fighting and being a waiter there. You need more you cash, can, man. You have to. You have no you need choice. More cash, man. Yeah, at the that's beginning of your – well, he wasn't at the beginning of his career, but not having notoriety and at the beginning, you're – you're going to get paid less. There's no combat sport that's going to pay you ridiculous amounts for prize fighting in that situation. See, that, that right there, that's why I also feel there's a reason why these foreigners that are not from the U.S. are hungry. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. These boys are hungry because they ain't making nothing. So, And they ain't got nothing. So they're coming out blazing. They're, they're not... They're not messing around. They're trying to kill you 
if you're in the octagon with them. Because they ain't they ain't got no money. They ain't got nothing to lose. What do they got to lose? I got to go back and to nothing. That's why. That's probably why to pay so low. Because they know they could get away with it. Just from that. It's not just that. They don't have any competition in pay. Honestly, the UFC themselves have no competition in combat sports other than boxing. But even in boxing, the low-end guys don't get paid shit. That's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. is like the big draws get paid crazy amounts of money. But the low-end guys, the guys you don't even know of, until they start knocking people out, like they they patent their record, but that's frowned upon, right? They're just mm-hmm. knocking out everybody. These guys that are really good, they keep knocking out everybody, and they're fighting like every other month. And that's how we're getting all these wins real quick, because they're fighting nobodies for nothing, knocking everybody out, and then next thing you know, you got this dude that's like thirteen and zero with thirteen knockouts, undefeated, blah blah blah. And you're like, who is this guy? Where did he come from? And now he's starting to fight competition because he's now on the actual pay-per-view or whatever it is for boxing. That's what a lot of people don't see. And, and even the bottom of like, that pay-per-view. He probably made like, what, 5K a fight or something? If that, you know? The, the last, I know this is slightly different, but the last thriller fight that Jake Paul was paying people like 2K, 2K and 2K two to show two to win it was only like three or four people that made a decent paycheck on that they fought like what three four rounds yeah i mean they were they were short fights but the ufc also fights what three rounds hold on guys. no no no. A three, round, a three round fight in ufc is a standard bout hold on guys hold on guys we yeah. gotta get back to the topic about francis's contract it's okay. relevant. You, you know, yeah, yeah. we like to veer off and go take the road untraveled and stuff. So mm. let's get back to Francis' contract. What do you guys think would make Francis not leave? Like, literally, if he leaves, this is some WWE stuff where CM Punk won the title against John Cena, and then his contract was up at midnight, and midnight happened, and he, he left. He left the WWE with the belt, and they made a whole storyline about this. Are we seeing that now, or are we gonna see like some something happen with Francis to where they work it out and we get our actual champion who defended the belt on one leg, literally. He was wearing two knee braces, so you can tell which one was hurt. You know what I'm saying? That boy's smart, <laughs> but. What do you guys think? Is are we gonna see the return of Francis? Or are we gonna see him go? Which would as it's unheard of. It's unheard of. How many champions left the UFC? None, right? BJ Penn has some retirements. Besides retirement. BJ Penn. BJ Penn did what? He left the UFC as a champion. And then went over to Pride. Oh, man, that's old school. Or did he go to K1? One oh, of those. That's old school. I'm talking about like <laughs> now times. So in the modern day, uh, Demetrius Connor, Johnson. Connor, well, Demetrius got traded. And he was not the champion. He lost to Sudo. Okay, that trade was going to happen regardless. I don't yeah. think the UFC lost that trade. They don't. They don't. They don't make that trade of, of DJ's champion. Um, yeah, they lost that trade. They lost that trade in general. I think they do make that trade if DJ was champion because even if DJ won, uh, they were going to get rid of the division at the time anyway, so they don't need him. No, but the, the, the division got "quote unquote" saved because Cejudo went on a tear. Wait, 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 wait. only because he won. Stay on track with Francis. Heavyweight, heavyweight, heavy contract. Yes. Champion. All right, let's, Mark, the, what do you think happens there? I'm on the side of both the company and Francis. I think Francis should leave. I think Francis should leave the company, go take his boxing fight, because my only, 
My only dispute on that fight before was if he lost the championship, the fight with Tyson Fury doesn't exist anymore. He did win. He should leave the company, go take his fight with Fran uh, Tyson Fury, and he will make the most money that he's ever made in his life, and then his career is over. It's not I don't agree with that. Bellator, I don't agree with that. Bellator is going to sign him. Yeah. <laughs> Bellator can't afford him. If he can't afford, if 600000 enough isn't enough to pay for his fights, he's not going to make it. The highest paid fighter is uh, Pitbull and Bellator, and he only makes 450000 a fight. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, but all their money comes from sponsorships, right? Most of their money comes from sponsorships. Okay, okay, okay. That makes so, sense. No, no. That makes sense. Hey, hey, all right, so here's, I'll give you something. You got Francis Ngannou, who's basically like a Marvel, a Marvel creation. So is Cyril if you, Gunn. If you, can't market, if you can't market Francis Ngannou, then you shouldn't be in marketing. They um, didn't market him, though. The UFC. How, how was marketing for this fight? Tell me how it was. Exactly. Tell me how it was compared Trevor. to last month. Or we're in February now, but in December. In December. How was the marketing? Exactly. I have an argument for that one, too. Some because part. Francis got marketed fantastic on his uprise. Not on his title fight. Oh. Yeah, he did. Until he, he fought Stipe, he was marketed fantastic. They gave him the go. All the way up to Stipe fight. He lost to Stipe. They shit on him. But then when he started winning again, they marketed him great until he ran to France and started. He won the championship and he started becoming difficult. That's when they stopped marketing him. That was uh, the same reason why when he lost to Stipe, that they say like he got so cocky and arrogant. You know? Right. That's the same thing. Same thing happened. You know who else is cocky and arrogant and still gets marketed? Conor the, McGregor. The Irishman? Yes. But Conor brings in the money. Yeah, yeah bro. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here's the thing. He changed the, the game. He changed the game. No, no arguing. No arguing. 100% agree. 100% agree. Do, do you think they market Francis the same way they market Conor? Hell No. They okay. can't market him the same because he doesn't bring in the money like Connor does. Well, actually, of course you can. Connor, of course you can. Connor fucking does it himself. He's yeah, really Connor right. really does it himself, to be honest. UFC is the marketing tool, though. They are the marketing machine. Yeah, they're the, they're the promotion. They're the promoters. The promotion. Like if you if you you're telling me you can't market a dude that's six foot five and built like a fucking statue that knocks everybody into a new dimension. You can't Every show time. highlight. Almost. You can't market that. Like if you can't market that, this dude's from a, from like um, a salt mine or some shit. Like, yo, his story going, is so good. His story is so good. You can, you, if you can't market Francis and Gano, you shouldn't be in marketing. No, it doesn't well, make any sense. To you. That's my argument. They were marketing him just fine until he became difficult. You gotta but, remember, but this is the champ. Him. This is the guy He's that there. wanted to argue. That the heavyweights don't fight often enough, and wouldn't fight often enough, and then sat out for a year. So you're telling me it right after winning sense. the championship, you're telling me it makes more sense money wise to market that guy less because he's a headache to you, but um in um, in contract negotiations, you say like okay, this is before it, contract negotiations. Well, no, no, I'm saying like. No, I'm talking about after the the fire, the milk has been spilled. Because we're saying that like the this bad blood between the UFC side and Francis and Ganu's side when it comes to the negotiation table, right? Mm -hmm. Like the UFC believes he should get paid in a, a certain amount. Francis agrees it should be more. They are at, at they don't have a deal. So because they don't have a deal, it now makes sense to market him. Less because they didn't market him very well in the Cyril Gunn fight. They didn't make that like it didn't make that a big deal. They could have made it. Dana White wasn't even fucking there at the press conferences. Dana White wasn't there to give him, give him the belt. Like if to, to say that the UFC marketed or tried to market Francis and Gondo the same way with the same enthusiasm as they did with Connor is disingenuous at best.
they don't market anyone this what same way they market Connor. But once again, Connor brings in the money. Israel Israel Adesanya. They market they market Israel Adesanya well. He gets marketed very well. They like market Con Connor. No, I'm There's saying no way they market the same. Not the same, but similar. They they give Izzy like Izzy's pay per views are a spectacle. Right. And because of that spectacle, he brings in money. Dana White's at in Dana White's at Israel Adesanya's press conferences. Yeah. Dana well, White again, puts, you Dana market White puts, the people that make you money. Dana White puts You the can market Francis. Money. You, you can, can market Francis. And they did until he became a problem. So they moved on in a new direction. That new direction after he became a problem was Derek Lewis. Then right after Derek Lewis lost and couldn't be that person, they went to Cyril Ghosn. That is a business move. You market the next step. If you have somebody that's not willing to work with you in the promotion, they're no longer being an asset for you. So you're telling me it's it's to take you have um a commodity because all the fighters are commodities, right? Like if um their whatever their value is to that company, it's finite. You have X amount of fights in you, and then that value is diminishing afterwards, right? I'm saying that as long as you're a draw and you can make money for the company, <laughs> they keep going with you. But the second that you become less marketable because you're not willing to work with them, then you lower that standard. That's what I'm saying. I don't I don't see it that way though. I, I don't think that's the case because we've seen, like I said before, I've seen build ups to fights um with people that were significantly less marketable than some of the guys we just mentioned. And yet the promotion for those fighters are immense. When like we saw movie. when we saw the Ronda Rousey versus um, Amanda Nunes fight, it was more about Ronda than it was ever about Amanda. We, Amanda was a side story. We didn't they didn't talk about Amanda's. Oh, give me, let, me, let me land. They didn't talk a lot about Amanda at all. The whole promotion was all about Ronda's comeback. Mm-hmm. The money was poured into that. All you saw was Ronda stuff. Did you see that for Francis and Gondo is what I'm saying? Like, all that takes is money and effort, not let's, cooperation from the fighter or melt. Like, the fighter itself, the, you, the marketing team, in order to go like, look, I don't fucking like you. However, you are the shit right now, so I want to market you as such. Do you think you make less money by doing that or more money by doing that as a so, marketer, as a promoter? Let's- Let's take that same example that you just used, that, that Ronda Rousey versus Amanda Nunes. Around that time, think of who Amanda Nunes was. No one knew who she was, not the masses. The world knew who Ronda Rousey was. So as a marketing ploy to get people to watch that pay-per-view and to see your, proje- or your product, you market the person that's the most valuable to you, which was Ronda. So you got all these people, all these little girls that look up to her and all these parents that have to buy it for their little girls. And you got all these people that saw her in movies and stuff. They're all going to come to watch her. They didn't give a fuck who Amanda Nunes was. Amanda Nunes didn't matter at that point in time. It wasn't until she beat Ronda is when she started mattering. And what did they do after she beat Ronda? They started marketing her. Okay, let's say, say. Do you think you get more or less money if both fighters are marketed well? Depends on the that, fight. Do you think that results? I'm just this is asking a question. If if Mosey is fighting Mark, do you think more money would be made if both micro, fighters are marketed well or just one? I see. I, I see it. I see the reason why boxing gets so much money is because it, both fighters get a lot. They got their own promotion. So, like, you have one side where you got, um, say, Mayweather, and then you got Pacquiao. You get m- money from both sides. I got one. You get money from both sides. I got one. I got one. I got one. Go for it. What was the marketing for Connor versus Dustin? Two, three, three. Not two, three. 
The last one. They promote both guys very well. They promote them very well. What was the marketing for Habib versus Connor? They marketed both guys very well. So I think they know what they're doing when it comes to marketing. They choose. Right. So with but the they're, whole they're Francis all- thing, they didn't promote that fight as well they they could have. That's my oh, on opinion purpose. on it. Yeah. On, on purpose, purpose, right? On purpose, oh, Dana White said uh, he had situations in the back. That's why he wasn't there to put the belt on. I remember him only doing that in certain times. Yeah, certain and times. Specific to when, because um, like, listen, not not marketing Francis Ngannou is heavily and specifically that fight is advantageous to the UFC in negotiations because he makes less money, he gets less recognition, and they can they have more bargaining chips. They know what they're doing. Of course they do. I mean who are we no, to I, say that what they're doing is not relevant, but we see what they're doing. Yeah. We're the voice of the voiceless. You get what I'm saying? Bro, it's a bullying tactic if you think about it. Like if you cause imagine this, like if you have if I'm the bank and I'm like, okay, um, it's in my best interest to give you this loan because you're going to pay this loan back and pay me at interest. Why would I not give you a loan if you're capable of receiving it? Exactly. Other, than, other than it's advantageous for me to not. But in, this, in the case of Francis, it doesn't make sense because if you say Francis leaves the UFC and Bellator happens to give him a contract where he can go off and fight random boxing fights against AJ and Wilder and Fury and whoever and make money there and also fight Ryan Bader at heavyweight for the title. you telling me he's not going to take that deal and make way, way more money overall than he's made in his UFC career? Yeah, he probably will make $5 million if he took the deal that was offered to him, but that's five million over the course of X amount of fights that that the UFC locks him into without being able to explore a boxing fight at all. That's the thing. You, you there's this thing in that contract where it says you can't like work or do something like for a year, and that's where he's at right now. He's stuck in right. that limbo. Like, bro, it's like, damn, like. You're telling me if I was perfectly healthy, I can't go fight or do nothing right now unless y'all say so? Like, where's my money? I understand where he's coming from. Me too. It's worked out so perfect for him because his knees are fucked up right now. I believe his MCL and ACLs all tore Mm -hmm. up. That's why I give him so much respect for somehow beating gone the way he did even yeah, though it, was, it wasn't great it's just like yo this man got one leg we got peg leg gone or francis over here with two leg serial gone that's like i don't know what i don't know i don't know man i, 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 up, bro. I, just, I just don't know yeah, I'm i disagree bro. i disagree that it wasn't great because here's here's what thing francis i thought he um for all the praise we give Stipe for being a tactician in the way he handled Francis, he literally picked Francis apart in the first fight, made, took him down at will, held him down, dominated the fight. We give Stipe credit for that. Francis did exactly that to Gon. And he said he, he saw it. He, he did exactly that same thing to Gon, and we, we say that was lackluster. How is it lackluster with one and not with the other? I think, like, I think it's truly it, because we expected – the uppercut or the knockout. You know, we expected the, the great knockout for, That's fair. from Francis. That's what we expected. Or the, well, you can't say the first two rounds weren't bad from Surreal's side, even though he did like them tap leg kicks. He didn't was winning the stand up. Bro, he did the tiptoe leg kicks, bro. Yeah. Bro, he won, he, he, was, he, 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 he won a point, he made it a point fight. And Francis, Threatened with power, and he didn't want that. It worked, though, in his favor. Due to the fact that that man was on one leg 
Imagine if he had yeah. two legs. KO probably third round. Yeah. Most likely. Or ground and pound victory. I mean, that, look, that's he, probably the I, I could see that one actually happening. Yeah. Um I thought he look I thought um going in, I thought this fight would be pretty close. Uh Francis dominated. Like he Cyril looked good at, at moments at when he point had the point fighting game going. But once um once Francis got him to the ground and kept him there, that was one sided. He got dominated. Like he just he couldn't get up and he couldn't stop takedowns. So it was like he basically got John fetched. I mean, if you let another grown man hold you down for fifteen minutes, then you, you lost, dog. Yep. I mean, yep. What, what, what more do you want? To, what more do you want me to say? Right, you can't right. get up. That's cool. Right. But I think it's time we guys, like all of us, move forward with this. It's been like what two, three weeks now. Mm-hmm. So we've been lackluster with the UFC in fights in general. So we finally got one coming up this weekend. And we got this crazy dude. I don't know too much about him. I just know the headlines that I see about him. Sean Strickland. Maybe you guys could inform me about this guy. I know he's a volume puncher. From what I was told, he's similar to uh, Max Holloway, Diaz, middleweight. That's all I know. I never watched his fights. I just know he's got some headlines in the news with some outrageous stuff that he says. I know Hermanson. Hermanson's trying to get your limb and take it home with him. So, how do you guys see this fight going? Tell me. Mark, you want to lead off? Yeah, sure. It's a it's an interesting fight. They. They're both very aggressive fighters, to be honest. Sean Strickland gets more headlines for what he says, just because when you're talking about literally killing people in the cage, you obviously will raise some eyebrows. I can't discredit him, because he is, I want to say, like, 17-0 as a middleweight. So in middleweight, he's done very well. Or no, he's not 17-0, because I think he lost to Usman. Was his only loss. Maybe. He I lost it. His, his last three losses were all at welterweight. Yeah. So Usman. Yeah. So I think he's like 17 and 0 in middleweight. He's undefeated in middleweight. Yeah. So I can't really hate on him. But at the same time, he hasn't fought like name names. So, Harmanson's a good step up for him. I think he fought Uriah Hall. Yeah, it was the only name that I knew of him. That's how I found out about him. He beat Uriah Hall. And I saw the fight. I was just, I didn't watch it. I saw the highlights of it. Like I said, I only saw highlights. And this dude's just volume punching. So, I don't know (laughs) how good he is for the amount of praise he's getting i don't know if it's because of the media or is he good so that's why I mean, i'm intrigued to see his fight with jack hermanson because i know hermanson he don't play i think it's a mixture of both he's definitely getting the promotion that he needs and you nailed it earlier he's a middleweight version of what you see from nate and um, even some, I guess at some point you can say Nick too, even though Nick Nick is a middleweight. So um, a lot of volume striking, awesome cardio, in your face, heavy pressure, talks a ton of shit. Like he's, he's doing a fight. He probably averages more trash talk than, or at least on par with Kevin Holland. Like he's talking shit to the actual was like actual opponent in the cage, so they're very similar. They, they they basically break guys with volume, and he he got he beat the shadow right Hall. I mean that was that, he dominated that fight. He looked good doing it. Um, yeah, 
I would say Edge Sean Strickland in this one. In my opinion, I would I would be leaning towards Sean Strick, Strickland for a bet. Um, Hermanson can win, obviously, if he can get this um, turn this into a grappling match and work submissions. I think Sean. I mean, that's Jack's wheelhouse. But if this thing is, uh, is a standing kickboxing fight, I'm taking Strickland. Where 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 does he train at? Does he train with Cejudo or am I tripping? I don't, Strickland. Wait, Strickland. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think so. No. I don't know where he Not trains out of. Let's find out. I've seen some crazy videos of him though. Where he did like the uh MTV cribs of his apartment. Where he pulled <laughs> out like a long scope. He pulled out a couple pistols, talking about checking the mail and then going to the shady parts of town, then he went to the toilet and talking about the flusher don't work, but if you put your hand in the toilet and pull up the chain, it works. Like I was like, oh man, this boy crazy man. He had a guitar talking about like I was gonna be doing this, but it it to get girls, but it didn't work. And then he had the heavy bag right next to it to to like I don't know, man. That dude, he's special. And yeah, they might have a guy that just. He's just off the chain to where they can market him. But I mean, the fighting style is interesting. If he loses, he just goes back to he goes back to the line because Hermanson's there. He's proven. And speaking of middleweights, like it's it's about to get crazy in the next few weeks because we got the. Title fight with uh, Izzy and Robert Whitaker, part two. Then you got on the same card of that, you got Jared Cannonier fighting Blon Brunson, Super Saiyan. So I don't know. And, and we just had Italian Stallion versus um, Fresh Hairdo Costa. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Costa's been saying some crazy stuff in general, but. In my opinion, Marvin Vittori is probably the guy that you got to beat to get a title shot. After Blonde Brunson and Cannoneer. So I don't know what goes on for a victory for either one of them. But it will be good because we don't know. It's the future. We'll see what happens. And we'll talk about it on the next podcast. <clears throat> so Sean Strickland is at Team Quest. With Team Ashley Team Yoder. Quest, Team Quest with like you know. Randy? No. With old man Randy? Randy Couture at Team Quest? Or did no. he make his own crew? He made his own crew, right? Yeah, they have uh, Extreme Couture. Oh, okay. But that's yeah. where he and was Dan, before. Is yeah, when Dan going? Henderson and all of them. Uh, Team Quest is basically a gym in Portland now. Portland, Oregon now. There's just That's gym. where uh Paige Van Zant was. Uh Paige Van Zant's husband is there currently. Chill Sonnen is there. The Westland gangster. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at their um I'm looking at their whole list. Well the speaking of right? uh middleweights in general. They also have a, a spectacular fight. That's probably not going to be noticed by nobody. And it's, that's the, the ultimate fighter finale that was supposed to happen between Brian Battle and, was it Trey Sean Gore? Right? Yeah. Not Sean Gore. Because if you look up Sean Gore, you're going to get somebody else. It's Trey Sean Gore. <laughs> yeah. Um,. Yeah, uh, Treshawn Gore's making his UFC debut. It was supposed to be uh, back in August or September, one of the two. Yeah. And um, both guys are on long win streaks. Gore has eight-fight win streak and Battle has a seven-fight win streak. And he made his UFC both debut. their win streaks are much longer than what they're advertising. Well... 
I know Brian Battle made his UFC debut recently. Uh, I'm just going off the uh, whole Ultimate Fighter tournament shit. Yeah. Because those are like. You're fighting. You're fighting somebody. True. You're just not getting paid. So it's like you're not getting paid how. It's not pro pro fight. Yeah, you ain't getting paid for it. It's an exhibition, literally. It counts. It counts for your life. It counts for your MMA record, but. No, it counts for your life. (laughs) Not pro fight. You're taking this damage for your life. Yeah. Um, bro, I, I looked at Strickland's last three opponents, and bro, he had a uh, he beat Brendan Allen TKO mm-hmm. second round, Christoph Jocko, you yeah. three round UD, Uriah Hall three round UD. Volume. Yeah, I mean, those are good. Those are all good. Good competition. I mean, Brendan Allen is uh seventeen and five. Jocko has like he's twenty three and five, and uh, you, we, we know you know who right your right hall is. I mean, your right hall is hit or miss, bro. It just depends how he's in the game. You know what I'm saying? He's he's good. He's, he's a quality. Most, he's the most inconsistent dude, man. Like I always hope he wins, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he just. When he goes on that streak, you're like, oh, shit, here we go. It finally happened, and then, damn it, man. Because you're right, Hall is fucking dope. But he just be losing the ones that matter every time. I just don't understand why, man. It's not like the lack of skills, because that boy's good. All right. I don't know what happened. Well, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Your boy Solo over here. Cheers. <laughs> um, now to adjust the mic. Look, Um. okay. So kind of backtracking a little bit. Sean Strickland, Jack Hermanson. <clears throat> I think um, Sean has an edge. I'm, I'm picking Sean. Uh, in this Treshawn Gore versus Brian Battle middleway scrap, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean with Gore mm-hmm. making his debut, um, but I think it should be a good one. It should be a good scrap. Both guys are legit, and it's 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 just um, as far as Uriah Hall is concerned, like. I think he just he just is what he is at this point. Like he's he's good. I think he's a talented fighter. He's gonna he's gonna win the fights that he should win. And then you know it, when he when he's up against guys who are talented as him, it's probably gonna be a fifty fifty type deal. So he'll win the ones he should win. And then when it comes, to, you know, like I said, like I think um, Strickland is pretty good. He's good. He reminds me of a, uh, imagine like a bigger Kobe. That's kind of how he is. He's striking like very a lot, lot of volume, lot, good boxing, good defense. He don't get hit that much. He's solid. Um, I don't really see. Yeah, I, I think I I see a victory for Sean Strickland for sure. That's why I'd lean. Uh, well, we skipped over we skipped over some heavyweight content. What content? We didn't talk about what happens if Francis uh, does not go back to the UFC. Like, what are the options? Oh no, 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 no! We're getting into that now. Okay, because now it's the time for the solid, good old fashioned ashy knuckle chit chat, and we don't have right. too many uh, like times to do that in general. And right now, in general, with the whole MMA landscape, we can actually talk about stuff. So, what do we do? And that's what we do. Exactly. We we could just start talking. We can actually, like, chit-chat. So, given if Francis leaves, 
Well, he's going to be getting surgery if he already did it or not. So, basically, we got a vacant heavyweight title, regardless of what you say. Because you know the UFC is not going to just let that title just sit there. They're going to do something. So, either we get a heavyweight title between John Jones, maybe, against Stipe for the interim. I don't know what it's going to be. The interim belt around, I say, August or September for International Fight Week, right? International Fight Week could possibly be Stipe against John Jones for the interim belt. But they might just strip Francis in general. You never know. We don't know what their rules are. We don't know the we don't know the fine details or nothing. So that's probably gonna be the, the next heavyweight big fight that you could expect. So I don't see Gone against Derek Lewis again or Tai Tuavasa. Curtis Blades, you know what I mean? That's not gonna be the interim belt. But you never know. The UFC's crazy. But the two the two fighters that could make that fight be a thing is Stipe and John Jones, a heavyweight. That's yeah. the only matchup that makes sense for an interim. Yeah. It's the only matchup that makes sense. Uh and it would always it will be an interim fight unless uh they don't do well with the negotiations with Francis. Uh other that's the only way they'll strip him is if Francis and their and the UFC's negotiations don't go well and he will be leaving the organization, that's when they'll strip him. Yeah, they will strip him really early. Yeah. Well think about it. Well bro, like think about it. He got um there was an interim title within three months of him fighting Stipe. Yeah. Right. That's true. Conor McGregor, um, that didn't happen. He didn't defend any, either belt. That boy held on to that title for how long? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think that we're being, if you don't, if we're not going to address that. No, they did shoot him from the uh, featherweight belt really quick. Mm-hmm. But he held Who's on to the lightweight title for a while. How, how quickly did he get stripped for the featherweight title? Like, a few days. Like, real quick. He he lost that featherweight title as soon as uh UFC two hundred took place. Like a couple days prior. So how long right. was it between he winning the uh lightweight title and UFC two hundred? That's how quick it was. We can look we can find that out. Yeah. You wanna, look how quick you, you wanna give it a look um, how quick that I w- was. I will say this. Um I don't remember it being that quick. It was, it was fairly yeah. quick. It was you, say well, under, you say under three When months? did he win the lightweight title? Was that at 200? No, 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 no. He didn't fight at UFC 200. Yeah, but when when did he actually win the lightweight title? It should have been before that. He, 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 he won it against Eddie Alvarez. I know, but I was, I was trying to figure out when he won it because he got stripped of his featherweight title right after he won the lightweight title. That exactly. way he could be champ champ at the same time, but then it immediately got stripped. Actually, you know what happened? I think the UFC 200 fight between Aldo and Edgar was for the interim or something like that. And they promoted Aldo, the featherweight champion. I think that's right. What that's what happened. That's what happened. What uh, was Connor doing? Wait, wait, what was Connor doing at that time? About Trying to fight Eddie Alvarez, uh, Mayweather. Yeah, boxing. That's the point. Just, that's the point I'm trying to make. He didn't get stripped because of he's injured or he was having a contract dispute. He got stripped because he wasn't competing for the title. He wasn't defending the title. Um, Francis wants the same thing. But they he let to. him hold on to that, that uh, lightweight title for X amount of time. Because remember, Tony Ferguson won the interim belt. And then got hurt. Mm-hmm. And then he got stripped. Yeah. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm like, look, 
if we're not gonna address that, that's not. I, I, if that is, I feel like it's like. Um, oh, bro! The whole time, Condor was throwing fucking dollies through uh, windows and shit. Right. I mean, he was doing <laughs> things that were, he was doing things that weren't favorable to him being marketed the way he's marketed. Like it wasn't like um, he wanted to go to the boxing oh. and fight. Hold up! Hold up! That oh, that whole oh. Khabib Connor marketing was probably the best thing ever for them. Well, what I'm saying is like I'm not even gonna I'm not even getting there. I'm talking about like as far as like his ability to f- compete in a different sport oh, while yeah, still yeah. being UFC champion. That was a precedent that was already allowed, and he made a lot of money doing that venture. Other fighters for the same company are looking up like, okay, well, I'm. The heavyweight champion. I'm the baddest man on the fucking planet. There is no, there is nothing better than me. I can be. I'll whoop. I'll whoop Izzy's ass. I'll whoop whoever's at 205's ass. You want me to fight Figueroa? I'll fight Figgy and Brandon Marino on the same night. At the same. I time. mean, he's a heavyweight. Fighter. Same time, he's a heavyweight champ. He is the guy. He's the guy. So if the guy can't do it, how can a guy do it? If you if you're making exceptions for one, you got to make exceptions for all of them, especially in the top tier. Like you're not talking about just a run of the mill fighter. You're not talking about just anyone. You're talking about the cream of the crop. This is the heavyweight champion of the world in the biggest organization in the world. So if he can't go, then do what Connor did at the same time at the same point in their career, then what can he do? What cards can he play? To make more money for himself in the same way that we just saw Connor do. I'm like, Connor fought Floyd Mayweather and made more money than he's ever made in his fight career combined. One fight. That can potentially happen for Francis fighting either AJ or Fury or Wilder. He'll make more money than that. That five million, he can afford X that. He can make 20 million. The five million they offer him, he can make twenty million one year. He's betting on himself, and he should. I agree with you. It's a winning bet. Um, the UFC not allowing that is weird because I'm like, all right, well, so, you, so you're basically saying you're gonna throw away a commodity that you currently have in the house, and so you can literally still you go let him box. He boxes, even if he loses, it doesn't change anything. Connor got the shit kicked out of him. He still mark. You still come back, and you can fight any fight that's scheduled for you for that he would cut that he would compete in. Be just fine. Do you think it's I think because he comes like back. the whole you can't fight for a year type of deal? No, like, I, hear, you know, like, my, go I, away? I just think it's, I think it's simple. I think it's much more simple than that. It's simply because they can. It's just bull, a bullying tactic because they can. They're like, look, I, I don't like you, so. Fuck off! I don't care. I hope you don't the make contract, it. Though they signed the contract, though they already did. But it's the contracts are in their favor. Like it's like okay, if you win, then you gotta extend. And they're paying them so little that they can't. Like here's the here's the difference between that and say like basketball. Basketball contracts are so good that like they get paid re- guaranteed. If the if the player like say the, the individual you're the best player in basketball. You're gonna get paid as such, so it's like it makes martial arts. That's not true. If you're the best, which we just talk about, the guy's the best. He just beat whoever we. He beat everyone put in front of him. He's the champion, undisputed. He's not being paid as the top guy in the UFC. He's not even close. This is because he's still fighting on his old contract. It's because like they're he's not they're not able to bargain collectively bargain. They get bullied into contracts. It's literally we watched it play out. We saw it happen with Tyron Woodley. We saw it happen um, with, with any champion that wants to get paid more, that demands to get paid more. They get scoot scoot. <laughs> Holla. go every make time. more every time. Every time it's, it's, every time it's the thing, every, though, like who has left the UFC and like made more? Exactly. And got more, oh. more marketable. You get what I'm saying? Like, oh shit! Exactly. You can say know. Tyrone Woodley. You can say Tyrone Woodley did it, but did he become more marketable? No. No, that was all Jake Paul. That, that got oh, dropped by Jake Paul. Wait, wait, wait. Let's be fair, though. Let's be fair. Tyrone Woodley was not champion at that point. 
he was on a four fight losing streak, and he's forty. But he still got mar- more yeah. marketable. But but he was still more marketable. In this situation, is Francis is like he's the champ. He's the guy. He he's is literally the, the man. He's yes. what, what what do they call it? The baddest man on the planet currently, and he's pulling the CM Punk right now. Like from the WWE standpoint, I'm telling you what he's doing right now is some crazy shit. You know? He's the guy. He's literally like the, the, he's the guy, not a guy. He is the heavyweight he, champ. He beat the the guy that the corporation thought was gonna beat him. Literally, he, like everything, everything's working about, out in his favor, and bro, now he's gotta get you know, surgery, bro, bro. so he's out for nine months. No, 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 no. Let's let's no. Nah, nah. Could you imagine, bro? Wait, could you imagine the NFL not giving the Lombardi, like the commissioner, not handing the Lombardi Trophy to the Bengals because they wanted fucking the Rams to win? I like, think if somebody that, else handed it no, to them, no one would no, care. No, no, no. The, the optics of that. You, would you could you imagine that happening? Like no. the, the commissioner, the NFL no. commissioner going. Roger Goodell saying does. he always does. He always, always does. He always. never has. Never has something. There's never to something do. in the back that causes them to not. When has Dana there. ever had something better to do other than the times when he's literally having an ego Especially battle? Especially when that's the pinnacle of your 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 whole shit, the heavyweight division. Sorry. He didn't give Tyron, the, and he didn't give um Francis the belt. What are the what, 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 what was the commonality there? They were at odds. The mm-hmm. NFL. Can't stand fucking Sean Payton. Guess who? Guess guess who gave him the hand the Lombardi Trophy in two thousand nine? Same commissioner that suspended him. It's like it's they're not that's it's op it's business, bro. That's that's not to me. I think it's um while the UFC is a marketing giant, I think they're they're dropping the ball. They can and do they're, anything. They're, they're 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 I think they're um it's not it's not a good look at all for them. It's 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 show, it's show, it, Jake Paul is also exposing them as like, look, yeah, you you you're saying like you're you you're, you're pay, doing it for the interest of your fighters, yet your guys are telling you that you're not, and you're saying fuck off. Except his champion that he promotes and he has under his contract only makes two hundred thousand a fight as a champion. Oh Who's wait, that? his that female boxer under him. That's huge wait. though. Two hundred thousand for a female boxing champion when That's you're you. sitting here talking about shitty fighter pay. No, but but female fighters don't. Like, female fighters. It's not apples to apples comparison. Because oh. like if you look at no, no if you look at boxing, that, if you look at boxing as a whole, the male division um, makes more money. It's like compared NBA to WNBA. It's not. But like, why is it that the males make more money? Because they're more you should. You should. marketable. Yeah, but but, but you, so you're telling me that Francis and Gano is is not as marketable. That's all you're saying. Look, no, you keep kind of trying dirty. to. They did do Francis dirty, they did but Francis dirty. at the same time, you got to be realistic of where Francis really is. He is the guy. Everyone says that the heavyweight champion of the UFC is the baddest man on the planet, the guy or whatever. But what UFC heavyweight champion has really been? that big of a star in the longest time. You want to argue marketability? Stipe was Stipe was the easiest, easily marketable person in the world, especially for the United States. Had the best heavyweight career out of any heavyweight there has ever been, and they shit on him every fucking turn they could, and never marketed that man the way that they should have. They did him dirty with the whole... uh... John, not John Cormier, Daniel Cormier against uh, who did he fight? Derek, Derek Lewis. Derek, uh, Derek Lewis. They did when him dirty like that, that for the Brock Lesnar fight. They they did him dirty with that one. They did right. him dirty. But, he, he sat out. They for did him dirty year, with that. No money. He made no money because that because he was on the contract UFC, so he had to uh-huh. do his firefighter stuff to make some kind of money. You get what I'm saying? Oh, so see sure he's not being a firefighter for free. Well, wait. Are we start? Are we seeing a pattern develop here? Like every time a fighter thinks that they should get paid more, the UFC just says "fuck off." No, no, no. Stipe wasn't asking for more. He just wanted no. a rematch, and they didn't give him he a, just rematch. Wanted a rematch. Well, and but he's, he's like, now nah, player. Well, no. well, well, wait. Well, well, but he's getting a rematch for the heavyweight title, which is the most money you can make. 
after he was the the champion that defended it the most. He, he can't. Mark he can't. He cannot possibly make more money than fighting for a heavyweight title. He did no. not ask for more money. Oh. He just wanted saying, a rematch. What I'm saying though, a rematch is for a heavyweight title, for a title, well, not a rematch for a fight. Mark Hunt fought Brock Lesnar at UFC 200 for nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars without a title on the line. So the UFC heavyweight title don't mean shit about money like but that. No, but, but Brock Lesnar and Mark Hunt are huge um, heavyweights. Marketable people. So they're huge heavyweights. You can, Mark Hunt is a knockout artist. Brock Lesnar's Brock Lesnar. That's all Francis I'm trying to say here is you pay the people that are marketable. Hold on. Francis Ngannou is a knockout artist. That's easy as fuck to market. Like You, you don't have... You, it's, it's they not market like, it, though, for this last they, one. They did not market it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Like, it's, 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 it's literally the UFC. That's the, that's the thing. It's like, okay, if, if, if UFC wanted to, they could market Francis better. Oh, for sure. Just like they how they didn't market, market uh, Amanda Nunes. They didn't at market all. her at all. Exactly. So you, if, 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 you me, if, if you take Amanda Nunes at that point, the champion, Actually, you market her. Think about it, bro. Did they even market her at all? They showed mostly. Like in general? Like, how, they showed, bro, they like, showed. Could mostly, they have pushed her harder? Yes. No. Since most of, you mean after? No, like, like no, no, no. after she knocked out Cyborg, that was their biggest star for the female side of the division. Literally, and how much did they market her? Not much. They marketed the shit out of her after it, that. It could have been better. It could have been better. <laughs> what? What was that? I was what? like, Amanda Nunes was literally the only person recognizable in UFC women's fighting. I, I feel they could have done more with her. Sure. Done more than her. Wait, wait. Here's a question. Here's a question. Remember when she fought Ronda? What was she coming off the the, the heels of? Misha Who? Tate. Misha Tate. How was the result? She just bopped Misha Tate like hard. Okay. All right. So and then she's now your undisputed champion, right? Because Misha Tate beat Holly Holm, who beat Ronda, and you got the person who beat all of them. Exactly. She's the girl. I like. It's not like she was a nobody who got lucky in one night. She was dominating her way up the ranks. I feel like it they was, didn't market her the way she could have been. She could have been no. like a superstar, like for real. Bro, she, she's an openly hold on. She's an openly gay female superstar. How the fuck are you not market that? I just the, feel like they didn't do it to her justice. The no. biggest problem they had marketing Amanda Nunes was. Her speak. She <laughs> couldn't speak English that well. She can speak English, but not well. And that is a holdback Nita, when it comes well, to a lot of promotions. Technically speaking, Nita can speak, babe. However, it's, it's not, if you're undeniable, that's they didn't not market him either. Wait, wait, wait. Stipe? Stipe, I don't know what language, he, like, I don't think he speaks English at all, but um, he speaks English. But I don't. I don't understand what he's saying at all. If y'all do, let me know. If you understand what he's saying, I don't know. Please tell me. Because he's well, speaking that Ohio native quagmire stuff. I don't know. Bro, you tell me what he's speaking. I can think of many examples of guys who can't speak very good English who got good marketing. I can think of... I, got, I, got, I can go all day. Who? Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo speaks fine. He speaks He's fine the, English. He just chooses not to half the time. It's it's okay. And I would argue that they actually market Francis better than they market Jose Aldo. Because right. every time Jose Aldo had a fight, they were always marketing his opponent. No, every time he fights, he's the greatest featherweight of all time. Uh, they show his all his highlights of him building up, of him becoming that moniker and like his legacy of being one of the best. He gets marketed pretty good. Like, if we're not saying anything, like, I mean, he's only going against two, the other guys who could be considered some of the best to ever fight any, uh, at featherweight. So they're going to get, they should get equal marketing. But he gets marketed really well. I would say. I don't think they've ever done a bad job of marketing Jose Aldo. 
think they did a bad job of it either, but I also don't think that they did a terrible job except for this last previous fight. Except for one fight for Naganu. They marketed him fantastic. So but it's the biggest fight of that of his career. Like, have, has Jose Aldo ever been in the title fight where you like, I wonder, uh, did, and you didn't see any marketing for it? Like, you didn't see any real buildup? I can't think of any time. For Aldo? For Aldo. Where he's fought for a title, and it hasn't been a big market, a big a lot of push for Jose Aldo on UFC side. Like, Korean zombie. He, when he fought uh, Peter Yan for that title, it wasn't that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? But Neither it wasn't. was uh, Korean Zombie. Korean Zombie, they actually marketed the zombie more than they marketed Aldo. But the, well, like, it that's was... the only times I could think of Aldo that he wasn't like that dude. I, 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 I think would disagree. they only did that shit for the countdown, oh. honestly. No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? Oh. A- answer this question first before we go. Did they Was it similar to how they uh, uh, marketed Amanda Nunes versus Rousey? Was it they? They ignored. They completely ignored all the. Oh hell! No. I'm telling you, that's hell that's no. a terrible example hell because no. Ronda Rousey. That's what I would say. Listen, that's what I would say would be the the precedent because like they for sure marketed Jose Aldo in that Korean mm-hmm. zombie fight. Mm-hmm. They didn't. They didn't completely leave. They didn't, it wasn't like all commercials of zombie and nothing of Jose Aldo. It wasn't. The Dana White was at the press conference with Jose Aldo. Do you Dana guys White remember? Um, Anderson versus Weidman too. I, I don't remember it. Like I don't shit on Weidman that whole time actually. In part two, like yeah. I'm just curious, like how that build up for that fight because that's the only the- comparison that you could get with uh, Ronda versus uh, Nunes. You get what I'm saying? That's not even comparable though. No, no, no. It, well, they it's they both of, got, it's kind of they both got, they both had the hype machine behind them. They had the Andersons. Okay, um, he got knocked out, but he was playing around, but he yeah, still yeah. ended. And then they got Chris Wyman. He's undefeated. He's the Yo, American he ten and zero going yes. into the first title fight. And Eleven and zero. Right. He's the champion now. So exactly, we don't know they, what's they gonna happen. Bro, bro, he, bro, he fucked up Anderson, bro. The, yeah, Mark, the, the only reason why I argue these. These are terrible examples because when you use Ronda Rousey or Conor McGregor in these marketing examples or anything like that, it, there's just no comparison. Because I can go up to my mother, who barely even knows what a UFC is, if she even knows, because I doubt she even knows what a UFC is. She might know. She might, maybe. But if I walked up to her and said Ronda Rousey, she knows exactly who Ronda Rousey is. If I walked up to her and what? said Conor you're McGregor, lying. you're like, no, I guarantee you she does. I'm, I'm gonna go find. If that. I say, if I say Conor McGregor, she knows who Conor McGregor is because he is a multi-faceted star. He's on commercials right now on regular TV. He's in movies. He's got many things going on. If I walked up to even most boxing fans and I go Francis Ngannou. They're not gonna know who the fuck he is. Exactly. That's the point. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. Like the, the point I'm trying to make is they, you, there's no Francis and Gano commercials. I mean, there's some, but there's like not as much as you see for McGregor. Like it's like the, the literal the person who's doing the marketing, the, the promotional company is not putting out the content. McGregor that, does that himself. No, no, no. He, he, he doesn't does give it. commercials to all he these people. It, he also, oh, no, no, no. But he does it, but they also on top of that. Push it more, right? It's, like, so, it's, like, it's not just that he's no, he is marketable. No, 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 don't get it twisted. Conor McGregor is awesome in that, but it's also the UFC promotes that as well. They like they and they put their chips in too. Is what I'm saying. So, like it's not just Conor going like you guys sit back and relax. I got this. The UFC is like okay, well we you go ahead and do your thing and do all your your shit. But in addition to that, we're gonna market the fuck out of you too. So. Like, they, that he gets that what, what Tony Ferguson calls Dana White privilege, whereas like oh, Francis ain't wait, getting that. Francis, wait, wait, Francis, wait, wait. He changed it up. Think? It's called the white list now. <laughs> so you're you're saying though, with the argument that you have right there, so you're saying that after Stipe lost his belt to him and he lost the Modelo 
commercial where they stopped saying that he was a champion and automatically Francis had a Modelo commercial and a Toyo Tire commercial and he had that um what was it? I want to say a Venom commercial for the Venom fights or whatever, the fight kits also. Plus he got extra sponsorship from Venom. He's getting sponsorship from all three of those companies. UFC wasn't marketing that. UFC wasn't pushing that. He's also that. one of the people that have the Monster logo on his shorts because he also that. gets promoted and marketed by Monster. Who was pushing that? The UFC. When I see the um, when I see the build up to Francis versus uh, Gone, it's nowhere near the intensity that UFC <laughs> shows that the UFC shows for the aforementioned people, not the individual himself. I mean the UFC's energy that they pour in. They didn't uh, pour that kind of energy in. I was saying, they yeah, gave they him marketing. all those sponsorships, and they only didn't market him for one fight. That's, like that's, this. Okay, look, Just one. How many, how many fights does a career have? Is it, is Not it many, one? but how I mean, many? This well, man like, came in here and had one fight in the UFC, and they marketed the shit out of him from one fight. So why stop? What are you talking about? Why, why, why stop? If, if it's, if no, it's not Francis. Broke, if it's not broken, if it's not broken, then why try? Why modify? You, you think they would take, wait, wait, You think they would take the day off of trying to squeeze more money out of marketing a Conor McGregor fight, or a Ronda Rousey fight, or um, Chris Weidman fight? Like if they if they have a fight where they know they can get more money comes in if they market more, why would they not do it? Tell me this. Tell me this. As if you were a business owner. And one of your employees, doesn't matter what fucking business you have, one of your employees walked up to you and be like, hey, I want to work for you half the time, and I want more money. Depends. Um, What's the, what kind of business are we talking about? Like, you can't compare it to your job because it's not the same. I'm just saying, got, any job. As a business owner, if you're going to get a guy that's going to give you half the effort for your business and half the effort for another business, and he wants more money than he's already getting... Why would you want to pay him more? It's different being an employee or a subcontractor. It's different. And being a uh, personal contractor and a subcontractor, you got to fight for your own fucking contracts. And he's fighting for it. The UFC is not having it. So he needs to leave the UFC, do his thing in boxing. That's what I'm saying. I'm on both of their sides. The business aspect makes no sense to agree with Francis. I, I don't see that. I don't think it be true. Wait, hold on. I don't see it to be true because we've seen the president already precedent already be set. They can literally like let him box and still keep him under contract under their own negotiating power. And ever since him. that fight with Connor, ever can, since well, that fight with Connor, how much has he been as big of a draw as he used to be? Connor, he's still a big draw. Still, still a big. But draw. he's still going down. He fights a lot less. He's, still, he's very picky. Well, the point, the point is, like, that's going to happen anyway. He's going to retire. If not, like, I mean, come on. Like, if, if he didn't fight Floyd, let's say he jumped right to Khabib. Khabib whips his ass. Then he goes to Dustin, and Dustin beats him. He's still not fighting three times a year, even if he doesn't take that fight. I'm just saying they learned from that. They had a hungry young kid that was killing it in the business. Then he got all that money from boxing. And has never been the same since. All I gotta say is Francis does not mark himself the way uh, Connor did. Connor does. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like if Francis was out here talking all this shit and like doing what he. Imagine if he said, like, oh, first round knockout or whatever knockout, what round it was with Overeem. Bro, you know how much fucking like push he would have? You know what I'm saying? Well, Francis is the most humble dude, though. Tell me he's not. He is. He's not. He's like, he's like humble. Like, he's, he's not uh, a Conor McGregor that's calling his no. shit like that. You know, he's not arrogant. He's just a humble dude. So that's pretty hard for the UFC to market in general. So I don't know <laughs> what you guys want to say about Francis is just like bro if it, if this man beat the best contender with one leg by holding him down on the ground bro like who's next literally who's next Derek Lewis because they had the uh standstill fight he might knock out Derek Lewis this time 
Because he don't give a fuck now. Like, I don't know. What do you want me to tell you? There's only two interesting fights, John Jones and Stipe. Those are the only ones that are worth having with him right now. Exactly. It's just John Jones, he's new. Wait, no, John's not even fighting. John is holding out for more money, too. Stipe is not. So Stipe, he fights Stipe Stipe again. It's like an even matchup. They're both one and one. So it's an even matchup. When was Stipe's last fight? Francis, was Francis last year. Francis has fought since the Bay fight? One time. So Francis has been more active? Technically, yes. Okay, well, Steve not. Does he have, does Steve have anything on the books? Nope. This is yes. John Jones. No, he no, doesn't know. John, John does know. We don't know when John Jones is going to do anything. Well, we can John answer those Jones. We can answer the question simply as no because neither one of those guys have anything on the books officially yet. Yeah. Correct. All right. So, with that being said, both guys, um, those are not those are speculations. The the guy that's the actual champion wants more money. The contenders under him, I mean, are guys come are guys who already lost. So we got like Curtis Blades. Uh, you got Rosenstrike and Derek Lewis tied to Ivasa. Those are your options, and they're fighting okay. next week. All right, and then you got Francis, who is the champ. Um, he just defended his title. He's not fighting we'll, for a while from surgery and correct. shit. Correct. Um, and he is the best guy in the division. So it, because of pay, he's on the other side of the company, right? So let's say you play devil. I'll play devil's advocate if you're here. Let's say I'm, I'm taking UFC side. But all right, UFC, you're right. You're the guys who make the money. You're the guys who cut the checks. Okay, um, you got a guy who is the best guy in your division, but he wants more money than you're willing to pay him, so scoot, scoot. All right, now you lose Francis, and Francis goes to Bellator. You got, you got Francis, and he goes to Bellator. He, um, or he goes PFL, whoever. You now got to make the UFC. You, you now know everyone who was watching knows that the best guy in the UFC, the best guy is in PFL. Uh, that's for sure. Like, the UFC As has to, like, figure this shit out sooner or later. Right. Because if, if, if you do that across the board, wait, wait. Let's say you do that across the board, right? Let's say that, that just happens. Just, that's a new precedent. Now, guys, like, you know what? I made it to the top. I'm the best. UFC, pay me or I'm leaving. Yeah, and exactly. They go, Okay, well, you just leave. And they're all right. Well, then the the league is literally going to be other leagues are going to be flooded with more but talent. That's the thing with the UFC. They got you. They got you in that that like last year contract. Like they're they're holding you on for that year after you sure. win the title or you're the champion or whatever. They're holding on to that that fucking year. You're like, okay, you gotta defend this shit. You know what I mean? So now let me ask you this last. question. Last question I have, I have to that. Then, if you're a young up and coming fighter and your only goal is to make the most money possible, you see the guys who you look up to, their struggle. They're like, I saw that guy come from humble beginnings, mm-hmm. fight for nothing, get to the title, and the UFC say fuck off. Whereas other organizations are like, oh, we we won't do that. We'll we'll, we'll, give, we'll give you we'll give you a better deal. Where do you think they start going? You think they start? They 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 put their chips in with just go for the the, the prestige of the name, or do they go for the dollars? It depends. So the on the biggest how long they've been in the game, though. No, no, they're young. They're young, young guys. They have the all biggest, access, all the access to information. They have. They see it, young dude. I don't know, man. I don't know. It depends where they get signed. Really, dude. We're there's starting one to big our- wrinkle in that whole thing. One big wrinkle. Even though everyone in the UFC is complaining about their, or not everyone in the UFC, because not nearly that many people in the actual UFC are actually complaining about their pay. It's usually other people. But all these big people, they don't go anywhere else because nobody else pays as much as the UFC. Corey Corey Anderson made more. Corey Anderson wasn't the marketable top GOAT of the UFC. I'm telling you, the people like Francis, once they leave the UFC, besides going for a boxing big payday or something like that, there is no other company that are is going to 
pay him the money that he wants. But but it doesn't matter. It, the outcome is still income. So if he goes to boxing and he makes twenty million, why would he care if he makes five hundred thousand or two hundred thousand at balance, or he made twenty million? That's I more, agree with that. That's four times more than um, what he would have made for UFC. Which is why I said he should leave the UFC. I yeah. said I'm on the side of both of them. I'm just saying when you get to his level in MMA period, because not everyone has that opportunity. Not everyone has the notoriety or likability and Tyson Fury calling them out. It's not going to be that big of a deal otherwise. But once you get to that level, there is no other MMA promotion that will pay you that much. The only other person that's crazy enough and offering stupid amounts of money right now is Habib. <laughs> and we don't know where his promotion's really going to go. The other organization that's offering that kind of stupid amount of money is 1FC. But 1FC is only big in Asia. So you can go make your money over there, but you're not going to get the notoriety. But that's what, that's what I'm saying, though. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm like, do you, do you think that fighters coming up now, like the young guys that haven't gotten paid yet, they like, look, I want to fight for money. That's what I want to do for a living. I want to fight to get paid money, where do I go to make the most amount of that? What's right the best, now, what, the what's best the route best? would be Bellator. PFL looks pretty good, too. I mean, PFL is make... only good if you actually win the tournament. Correct, but what I'm saying is, like, is a guy, is a, let's say, for instance, you're a young guy. Sean Strickland just won how many fights in a row? He just, against UFC competition, he just, he just won one, two, three, five, like five. eight, seven. Something like that? Yeah. He's won five fights in a row. He lost um, on, on the Nunez Pennington card. But um, after that, he went win, 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 win. So five in a row. It takes four fights, right, to win the PFL title? Mm -hmm. All right. So Sean Stricken could, could arguably win the middleweight PFL title. If he can the tournament. Just win, win the tournament. Correct. Correct. But if he, yeah. if he can beat... If he can, if he can beat Brendan Allen, Christoph Jocko, and Uriah, no. if, if he can beat them legitimately, he can legitimately have a shot at winning the middleweight title. Because oh, these are, these I think I'm, I'm going off his uh, middleweight wins, bro. He's like undefeated at middleweight, I think, right, right. now. Sean Strickland is, yes, yeah, he is. His last loss was at welterweight. He lost to. Uh, a boy couldn't wait. He was, he's pulling a Robert Whitaker. Yeah, he's going up. Calvin did too. Well, Calvin there's, there's, didn't do it by choice. Well, so there's a lot of guys who had more success moving up. Yeah. Um, fighting more than natural size, which makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that Sean Strickland could easily. So you, see, he, I, you see more uh, raviolis and shit, some shit for e shit. I think if he went to the PFL, he'd be a favorite to win the middleweight title. Okay, okay. So let's see. Um, how much do you think? How much do you think he makes right now? Who, Sean Strickland? Sean Strickland. Probably not that much. I don't know, man. Because, bro, have you seen his crib? Yeah, he looks. He he lived he lived in an apartment like we did when we were twenty, bro. When we're like. 20 when he had like a bed on a side corner of a bed, a room with All like a I have to say is, you know, damn well, I got the fucking video, bro. Exactly. Exactly. I got the fucking MTV crib video, bro. That's all I gotta say. That's why I said the best place to go is Bellator for those people because Bellator will actually pay you about the same, but you can have sponsors. And then you can, they also build their homegrown talent. So therefore, Bellator is a better place for the younger people. I'm not arguing that. Okay. Um, DFL, right off the bat, is a little bit more bite, or is a lot to bite off at the beginning of your career. If you go Bellator to PFL, okay. But I think Bellator is the best bang for your buck. Like someone like AJ McKee, for example, or even Pitbull, or Michael Chandler. 
You know, mm. go in there. They will grow you. They will give you the money. You will make a name yeah. for yourself. And then, then you can go into something like the UFC or PFL and have all that marketing backing. That's why Michael Chandler gets the pays that he does. That's why Eddie Alvarez got the pay that he did. Shit like that. So, I don't think the UFC should be, ever be the starting point for any fighter. If you combine his last four wins, because he made his best to date is 60,000, 60,000. 60 to show, 60 to win. If you combine his last four wins, the PFL champion will still have made about $600,000 more. Okay. And, and if he loses that man? first fight. Who's that? What's up? Who, Sean who Strickland. Wow. This is Sean. Sean Strickland. He made um so he made one hundred K one one hundred thirty K before taxes mm-hmm. in um the fight versus Uriah Hall. He made nine hundred K not sorry, he made ninety nine thousand for the one versus Christoph Jocko. He made hundred and forty four thousand because he got the bonus. He got the performance bonus. He got a fifty K performance bonus against Brendan Allen. So he made one hundred forty four thousand, and then he also got a bonus um, from his opponent missing weight. So he made ninety six thousand. His original was forty to show, forty to win. He won. His fighter, his fight, his opponent also missed weight, so he made ninety six thousand. So it. that's made no- Look, that that, my funny. argument for that with PFL is if he goes all the way there but loses his last fight, so he fights all four fights but loses the last one. If he loses he anyone, paid. if he loses huh? any one of these fights too, it's significantly um, lower, but not this low. Because if you lose one fight, that one championship fight in PFL, you only get paid thirty-one thousand for each one of those fights. So you're only making one hundred twenty-four thousand for three okay. fights versus, or for four fights. Mm-hmm. Sorry, so for four fights, you've only made one hundred twenty-four thousand dollars. Versus what you just said for him. All right, uh, uh, that's fair. Look at uh, so the fight versus Brendan Allen. Uh, ninety-two thousand of the money he made of the one hundred forty-four thousand. Ninety-two thousand of that would have been gone, taken out if he loses. If he loses, he only gets forty-two thousand. So ninety-two thousand is out if he loses. Any one of these fights that he's in, if he loses at any point, he's making significantly less. He's but not that much up. less. Not that much. Like, if you lose one of those fights. And then you also got to argue the fact that if you lose one of those fights before that, now you're out of, a, out of fighting for another year until the next tournament comes around. Well, here's the thing. Like, um, this, is, this is the same. Like, it's, it's the sa- same thing. Basically, if he loses any one of these fights, he might, he might, might not be getting paid higher. In fact, he wouldn't be getting paid higher because if you look back at the deal, every fight before that was slower. The only so, reason that it's higher is because it's he's on a winning streak. Right. If but even if you go with the lowest one, the lowest one you said was like what, 40K? If you lost. No, 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 no. The lowest one um, in that, yeah, no. The lowest one in that streak was 40 40. So the lowest one in that streak was 40 40. So he probably would have stayed on that trajectory of 40 40. Right. But if he and loses. Four fights of that, he makes barely more than he would have made if he lost the championship over there. Well, if he loses one, if he loses that fight, he doesn't make forty forty the next fight. He's only no because his contracts is going to be the same. If he's making forty forty, his contract's going to stay forty forty. But if he loses all three fights in a row, he's probably going to cut. So that's where how, it really changes. How long? How long are their contracts? Because look, he went from making uh, eight eight ten ten. Uh, he he made seventeen thousand in his loss to Ponte Nibio. Then he made 17 17 in a win versus um are you all? I don't care, I'm not gonna say that right, probably. Uh, he made 2020 versus Garcia, 2020 versus Breezy. He made uh 32 to show for uh Usman, it was a loss. He made 30, so he made 32. Um, and then he got 32 32. 34, he lost this one to Dos Santos. Um, 34, 34, 40, 40. So, like, 
I guess that this deal was a, a, a three fight deal because 34, 34, 32, 32. 30, yeah. So I guess it's three fight deal. Three fight. It's three usually fight. three to eight fights, depending okay. on somewhere in between. So his first three deal was fights. his first deal was eight eight ten ten. Seven, seven, eight, first, first two was eight, eight, ten, ten. Then it was 17, 17, 17, 17, 20, 20, 23, 23. But the increases came after wins. Then you look at, you look at it again, it goes 32, 32, 30, 30, 30, 40, 40, 40. They made basically 40K each one. And then he got a pay jump. After every three, he got a pay jump. After every three, yeah, so he was probably signing three fight deals. Correct. And these deals, like I said, these are only given to you if you win. You ain't getting that if you lose. Right, but you also, at the beginning when he was making those shitty, shitty checks, do you think he could really win the PFL championship at that point? Um, or do you think, are you trying to base off his skill now versus I think, I think what it was the then? Guy. Yeah, no, you say the same guy because he's not getting similar opponents. He's getting worse opponents. He's, like, he's, getting, he's not getting Uriah Hall. He's getting somebody from PFL. He's not getting... Um, Christoph Jocko, he's getting somebody from PFL. He's not getting Brendan Allen. Brendan Allen's fucking undefeated. He's getting somebody from PFL. He's getting way favor- more favorable matchups at PFL. Like, way I agree. I'm just saying, with his current money that he's making now is still more, because now that he's facing that top-tier talent, at that point, he's making more in the UFC than he would without winning the million dollars because everyone bases the, the pfl off just winning that million dollars but that's huge because if he wins those four fights he does get the million and but he, if he loses he, it he loses a lot of money that's what i'm saying so it's a gamble see. it's the same as kayla harrison he's gonna be big fish small pond well there's not a lot of like kayla harrison doesn't have anybody in 155 division yeah for females N- let's, let's be honest Let's try to name PFL's top five uh, middleweights. I got time. No, I mean, exactly. honestly, it's the same who, thing. Who, but who? Middleweights? For what? That boy comes just, to UFC, he's getting bopped. Whoever that middleweight champion is. If you whoever, if, 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 you if gotta Sean's remember that PFL used to be the World Series of Fighting. I still take who fought for the title multiple times from the World Series of Fighting. Currently, we got this uh, uh, Justin Gaethje. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. I'm yeah, but so you, do you think Justin Gaethje would be a favorite to win the PFL uh, title currently? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. There you go. I'm not saying yeah. that Sean Strickland couldn't win that, but I'm just saying we we were originally talking about where it would be best for new fighters to go. That's that's the point. I'm, I'm just saying it's fight. too big of a gamble for a new fighter to go over there. I, I can't agree, and here's why: because of numbers. If you look at his career earnings without taxes, he's made eight hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars in career earnings without taxes included. Right? That's in. Let's see here. That's in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fourteen fights. You mean to tell me? If he got 14, he got that would be three tournament runs. Four fights apiece, right? You mean to tell me he can't win one one time PFL? Out of he gets 12, he gets three 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 chances, he can't win the PFL once. He might, but how many times did he go fucking broke and have to leave the career before hey, that? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, you guys. Well, no, I'm just asking. Do you do you, do you think it's our think time he, now, though? It's our time yeah. now. Our time yeah. has has come. <laughs> we could keep doing this all night long, but it's we our time now. I just want to know. Like, it, it's truly I, our time now. I will end it at this. It's our. You time are a now. gambler. Go home. Yes, you are a gambler. So that would work for you. My better bet would be to go to Bellator, who will create a better career for you and the longevity. And probably make you more money in the long run. I mean, maybe. I mean, this is. I'm just saying that, like, he wins at least a million if he wins four fights in a row at any given year in PFL, and that trumps his career earnings in UFC so far. 
All right, guys. So if uh, our listeners want to request the part two of this conversation, where can we uh, reach each other at if they want to know? Guys, hit us up in the comments. Like if you like this con- this content, like it, subscribe. Hit us up in the comments. We'll we'll interact. We can talk about whatever you want. Let's show us some love, and we'll show you some love back. You can hit me up on Twitter at Marky G, and you can hit us up at Ashy Knuckles. Yes, absolutely. YouTube slash Ashy Knuckles dot com dot period dot whatever it's called. I don't know how to do it, but yeah, or yeah, a Mosey. Actually, I don't know what I'm called, but yeah. Follow us <laughs> on Ashy Knuckles. That's for sure. Um. The last thing I would say to wrap up this whole fighter pay thing is this. If you're a young fighter and you're out there and you're listening, if you got four fights in you, you think you can win it, there's a shot to win a million for four fights in certain organizations. And there's a, there's a lot of organizations around the country. So you got options. It's not, I know the prestige, the recognized, the recognized, being recognized as the UFC champion or a UFC fighter is huge, but if it's just about securing the bag, you got options, dog. So weigh your options, make a choice. Do what's best for you. Amen. Hey, so zip it up. Zip it out. Zip it out.